Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another Pokemon card market update. It's June, and it's me, Mr. Card Economist, in my pajamas. Do you like my pajamas? I just wear a white shirt to bed. All right, so I don't make these videos very often, so please enjoy it. Uh, you can see my trash in the background here. Yes, we generate a lot of trash from our daily live stream, our nightly live stream, I should say, because we do the late night live stream. Uh, I've generated a list of topics to choose from. They're not in any particular order. Uh, I, I love this. I got my camera on my new uh, stabilizer. If I actually had the app for this, it would follow my face, I think. So I think I can move like this, but I haven't got that set up. Anyways, uh, June. June's a great, a great month for this kind of video because we are six months into the year. So you have a better feeling for the year 2023 so far. And I am somebody who sells more cards than the average person. So I can give you some of my anecdotal experience about what's going on. Uh, people may have different experiences, but yeah, I sell a lot. So uh, let's see. A whole they're, Again, they're not in order. I saw a Reddit post. Someone submitted an Umbreon and it came back Perfect 10 uh, Black Label with uh, BG, BGS. How do you know that it was the actual Umbreon? What if he's just very cleverly posting addictive content? So we would need some way to identify that it was the original Umbreon uh, in order for him to say, yep, that's the same Umbreon that I cracked out of the PSA slab. So for, it was a PSA 8, and they submitted it to BGS, and it came back black label. I don't know. So anyway, someone brought that up with me. How do you prove that it was actually the same Umbreon? Uh, here's another interesting piece of news. There is an $83,000 Battle Day Lily. I sold one of those last year for Mary for fifteen thousand, um, but there is one in auction for eighty three thousand. Presumably, it's real. I it could just be fake bidders. Have you guys ever heard of that? People fake bid. Uh, I've been doing this for like four years now, and I've seen cards that just sell for like crazy amounts over the regular buy now price. In theory, it could be real on this card because it's such a rare card, but I have a hard time believing it. Just sold for twenty thousand like three days ago. Could you imagine it just sold for 20000 and then the next day someone's bidding it up to 83000 So, uh, it could. if you guys didn't know this, you can just buy f old eBay accounts off of the internet somewhere, log in, and if you got two fake eBay accounts, you can just bid back and forth until the card's 100000 Why would you do that? Because you're a troll, because you want to make the news, you want it to go viral. There's many good reasons to make a card that you own. Uh, make it into a viral video. Um, about Mr. Card Economist is talking about it. Anyone could be talking about this. All the Pokemon guys could be talking about this. Talk about it in the Reddits and stuff like that. So I think the bids are probably fake, and I've seen my share of these happening so often, it is really hard for me to believe that it's 80000 If the seller um, provides some receipts about who bought it and that he really paid, and it really shipped off to him, uh, and they don't know each other, then wow. Congratulations on the seller, because that is a lot of money to make in one year off of a piece of cardboard. But for me, and, until I get a little more evidence, I think it's fake. All right. Um, let's see. Modern girl cards in general are up. So uh, we're always paying attention to cards that are moving up and down in the hobby, right? And one of the cards moving up in price a lot are the girl cards. Do I have one of the girl cards up on my table? This is funny. I actually have one with me. I think I have one with Do I? Yeah, here we are. So this was in Slab Away. Can you see it? Here it is. That's Acerola from VMAX Climax. Huh? See? That is now $650. Oh, it's probably in reverse. $650. When I sold it, it was like $200 or something like that. And someone put it into Slab Away and then they didn't pay it off. And so six months later, it's mine again. And uh, I, I go back to look at the current price, expecting it to have fallen. Many prices fell, by the way. I went back expecting it to have fallen, and no, it's like triple what it originally was. He should have paid it off. He just didn't know. Um, I didn't know. Uh, a lot of people didn't know. So, you know, six months ago, that card was a third of the price. So we always want to know what's going up and down. And I can tell you, Japanese girl cards went up. Question is, does it go up further from here? I, I don't know. I have my doubts, and I'll tell you why. It's because, you know, this product that is coming out of VMAX Climax is like one year old. I think it's, I think it's one year old, right? Is it one year or two years? Two years old. I take it back. Two years old. It might be like more like a year and a half old. And when a product's only a year and a half old, there's a lot of it left out there. 
So there is so much VMAX Climax that hasn't been opened. And by the time a great deal more of it's been opened, there'll be thousands more of those Acerolas when they're all done being graded. So, and she's not even, I don't think she's considered a major pull in that set. So uh, I'd be careful with that one. It, it could just be the case that they're really crazy over it and they really are gonna go all the way. I, one of my viewers told me that the, the push in the price is being caused by the fact that there are popular uh, social media influencers in Japan who are buying and promoting Pokemon cards. And so there's been this big push to acquire more Japanese cards. You guys might remember, I very early, uh, bef before I knew anyone else was doing it, this is going back in TCC lore, uh, I started buying pretty heavy amounts of Japanese Pokemon cards. And I was talking about how, well, you know, what's interesting about them is the actual Japanese market could one day affect their value. So you got English buyers, which you're used to, but one day you might have Japanese buyer who are pushing up the value of the cards. That's precisely what's happened. And I own a lot of Japanese cards as a result of that. Actually, it's kind of funny. Um, Early on in, the, in my Pokemon card uh, journey, we got like these large donations from a guy named Ryan Upchurch. And I guess he's like a country singer. He was dropping like $500 donations. This was like in my first year. And uh, my channel was really small. And it was because he was also buying Japanese Pokemon cards, vintage Japanese Pokemon cards. So he thought that, I think he was just showing some appreciation because I was showing him off so much. And yeah, so here we are all this time later and you're really seeing an effect of that. This idea that the Japanese market is something to pay attention to because they might decide that they want certain cards and it's going to affect us over here in the USA or the UK or Canada or Germany, um, Australia, all these places that are collecting the cards. You got to pay attention to that because Pokemon is, it originates from Japan and they have a gigantic population and they have a lot of wealth over there. Okay, so don't forget that. Girl cards on the rise. Another thing we've seen on the rise have been uh, tag team alternative arts from the sun and moon era. I didn't really collect those. I don't think a lot of people collected those. Uh, I have a I have a card, I was gonna sell it, but now I pulled it back because I wasn't sure. Here it is. So this card was for sale, but I'm just gonna hold on to it now. Now that's English, that's uh, Umbreon Darkrai. And I'm kind of scared to sell it because I'm wondering where it goes. It's, it's pop 500, which to me is really too many in the population to hold on to, but uh, for a modern card, that's not bad, actually. Yeah, for modern cards, we see gigantic, burgeoning uh, populations. They're absolutely explosive. So 500, you know, for a modern card isn't that bad. So we are, we're seeing these alternative arts from Sun and Moon move up. We're seeing Japanese girl cards move up. And, and, and this kind of leads us into one of the topics that I wrote down here. Sales in Pokemon cards in 2023 are down. Oh, no. 35%. Well, not really. Um, less than 35. So I, I have like charts in my PayPal account that tell me my sales this year compared to last year. It says I'm down a whopping 35%. But I started a new payment. Uh, I started receiving payments on Zelle. <laughs> so that number is not perfectly accurate because I get a lot of payments through Zelle now. Um, I added it up one time. It was like $1,000 one day, uh, just payments from Zelle. Uh, let me turn this down more. I hate this song. Wait, let me skip this song. Yeah, okay. So that's a lot. Uh, and and the when people are paying through Zelle, they're not paying through PayPal. So my PayPal numbers look like they're going do 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 do. Um, but it's saying thirty five percent less than year, uh, less than last year. And if I had to guess how much is coming through Zelle, if I'm just guesstimating, I would say my sales are down this year. Maybe about. 10%, maybe 15%. And I blame it squarely on the lack of Pokemon card sales. We are doing fantastic when it comes to older Pokemon cards. People like the older box breaks. They like the vintage pack breaks. They are loving the uh, slab breaks, by the way. Those are super popular. Uh, but you want to know what's really not selling even a little bit? Scarlet Violet. <laughs> Nobody wants it. I've got a case of Scarlet Violet. It's like the same case I ordered a month ago. Somebody will pop in and buy like three packs of it maybe. And then it'll just sit there. I mean, I can lower the price. I can lower it till it's nothing if I wanted. Um, it just, nobody wants it. And it's funny because it's not, you know, it's not like I priced it any differently than any of my other Pokemon product, but people probably buy more Evolving Skies at like $13 a pack than they do buy... Scarlet Violet, which just came out, just it's got like the lowest price it's gonna have, which is like five or six dollars or something like that. Nobody buys Scarlet Violet. 
So they do not like uh, Scarlet Violet. And uh, I've talked about this multiple times in my stream. When the Scarlet Violet game came out and revealed the roster of Pokemon, the new Pokemon, I immediately turned to my wife that day and I told her, this is going to affect card sales. I said, all these Pokemon suck. Almost all of them, not all of them, but they, a lot of them suck. And so when the new sets come out, product's not going to sell. And that's been mostly true. The primary cards to make a lot of money in the new sets have been like girl cards. That's a little bit depressing. It should be Pokemon. Pokemon should be the most expensive card in any Pokemon set. It is depressing to see the girl cards are the most valuable cards in the sets. And uh, I personally did not like Scarlet Violet the game. I felt that it was sort of uh, rubbish. I felt that it was similar to the previous games. It felt wonky. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of, what do they call it, open worlds. I feel like open worlds is just the popular thing right now, but it doesn't necessarily make a game way better than a game that's not open world. Like Super Mario 64 uh, had a, a few open world elements, like you could kind of, but it mostly was an open world, right? It was course driven. So you, you jump into the same painting over and over again, it was the same course. And then you needed a certain amount of stars to get to the next door, right? So you know, uh, Dark Souls 3, another great game. You know, it had some elements of being able to take shortcuts or change direction, but mostly it was a linear game. So, you know, the best games ever made weren't necessarily open world. Some were, but yeah, the obsession with open world, I don't get it. Um, Pokemon Scarlet Violet did open world, and I didn't feel that it greatly contributed to the fun of the video game. And then on top of that, the Pokemon designs were terrible. I thought the bad guys were boring. The story was okay. The, uh, oh, the Paradigm Pokemon were cool. I like the idea of the uh, the super past and the super future, right? That's great. But it didn't launch, in my opinion, with many Paradigm Pokemon. And I'm still kind of waiting to hear, like, more reveals. And I'm not hearing a lot of reveals for the Paradigm Pokemon. Like, I heard about the Suicune, and I think there's been another Pokemon. Um, I don't know. Yeah, they need to release way more Paradigm Pokemon. Because that's what they got going on for Scarlet Violet. That's really cool. I just haven't heard very much. So... That translates to lost card sales because if there are not cool Pokemon for that era of Scarlet Violet, then they either have to print these unpopular Pokemon, which is what they've done and nobody really wants them, or they have to print sets that heavily rely on older generations of Pokemon. And that's what they've done as well. So uh, the new set coming out, Pokemon 151, you know that your good sales are coming from the Gen 1 boomers like me right? So Pokemon, I don't know if they had some way of understanding that their sales had declined like crazy. And so they said, all right, crank out the 151. Or if it's all planned like 24 months ahead of time, and this was just their strategy. Either way, um, I expect Pokemon 151 to do a little bit better. You know, we're going to get EX versions of some uh, Gen 1 Pokemon. So that'll be fun. Also, there's the new Pokemon, um, you know, starter base set thing where you get the original artwork of Blastoise, Venusaur, Charizard. I feel like they've played that too many times. You know what I mean? The uh, the Charizard, the original base set Charizard artwork is reprinted like every year now. Well, you had Evolutions. Uh, I don't think Sun and Moon did it. Did it? No, Sun and Moon didn't do it. Uh, but then you had Sword and Shield and they did it. And now we're doing it again the next year, you know, or the next season. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much base set Charizard. And it doesn't even look all that, uh, it doesn't look all that different from uh, the 25th anniversary Charizard, this new base set Charizard that they're reprinting. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking for Pokemon to do new things. Come on, Pokemon. You know, Minecraft's got glow-in-the-dark cards. What about numbered cards? What about signature cards? Weiss is killing it with the signature cards. Um, what about bringing back first edition? Give us something to chew on. Uh, uh, which brings us to a new thing. Hasbro, Magic, uh, is Hasbro owns Magic the Gathering, right? Am I wrong about that? Magic the Gathering has their whole one of one ring and i hate it actually the longer i think about it the more i don't like it and it's all anyone's talking about so yeah i mean to the point where it's kind of annoying actually what i want to know is does the does the card ship out in the first wave of boxes so on day one do i have a chance to pull that ring is that how it works and i strongly suspect no unless the company is required by law to show you when the ring goes out the one of one ring, unless they're required to do that, there's no way they're releasing it on day one because they're a company. They're not going to gamble on that. Uh, I've heard uh, somebody told me that Rudy suggested that the price of the packs won't fall after the one of one ring is pulled. Are you crazy? Yeah, they will. Duh. <laughs> 
you don't got to be rocket scientists to know that people are going to be considerably less interested in the packs after the ring is pulled. Uh, that's nonsense. Of course, it's going to go down. Uh, and so, yes, I suspect that a conservative company that has a lot of money on the line, millions of dollars or more, tens of millions, they're not going to release the ring on day one. But what they're going to do is they're going to let people freak out and overpay on the product in the first week and the second week and the third week. And as the pot gets hotter and hotter, people get crazier and crazier for more product. Oh my God, it hasn't been pulled yet. That must mean we're close. They're still printing it, you know what I mean? So that's what I suspect will happen. It actually, um, it makes me feel, the frenzy makes me feel like probably I should not even buy it. Is that bad of me? Uh, I feel like probably I should not even bother. You know what I mean? Uh, my suspicion is that this is basically like a scam almost, you know? Like um, playing the lottery. Oh, there's going to be one hot jackpot. And all of us degenerate gamblers don't think spend. 90% of gamblers miss the, uh, quit just before hitting the, uh, the uh, jackpot. <laughs> so it, it has a true gambler feeling to it. And I don't like it. Mm -mm. I don't like it. Because I know your real odds of pulling the ring card are going to be abysmally small. And I suspect a manipulation uh, from the company onto the card. And I certainly would not like to be holding a lot of product when the card is pulled. Uh, and yeah, so just overall, I don't like it. I've not seen the actual other pulls in the set. Um, I'm not excited with the race swap. <laughs> I think that race swapping is a, a kind of pandering and perhaps you could call it uh, patronizing. You know what I mean? These were characters that were really made famous by the uh, Lord of the Ring movies. And I think they should have just made the characters look like the original actors somewhat, don't you think? So there's a lot of that going on, and Hollywood loves to do that. They just did it to Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid bombed. Right now they're talking about how Little Mermaid is probably going to uh, be a, a net loss for Disney. The No one will watch it overseas. So they lose all their money. No one in Asia wants to watch it. In the United States, Metacritic viewer score gave it like a 2.2. What was crazy is even the critics gave it like a 5.9. They said they messed around with it too much, right? That's what they said. They said, well, you know, you changed all the music. You, you made her a strong, independent woman instead of a love story between her and Eric. I didn't watch the movie. I don't know. But so I feel Magic the Gathering's doing the same thing. And I'll be honest, kind of drives me nuts. Kind of just makes me want to say I'm boycotting that company because... Just let it be, dude. Don't don't change the story. It's such a it's such a truly famous story. Why get into you know changing all the characters in the story? And of course, they have a reason for that. It's 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 politics. They've injected politics into it. That's what it is. Nobody in the past would have thought to do this. Nobody would have cared or complained if the characters looked the same as they did in the movie, right? Uh, so they're injecting politics into it. It's, it's very much a turnoff. And then at the same time, on top of it, the whole like one of one ring thing, it feels very scammy. Uh, it feels like I need evidence that the ring has actually been released. I need I need Magic the Gathering to tell me that, yes, you can pull the ring right now. The ring is in the boxes right now. We're done printing. I need that in order to feel like I'm not just getting ripped off. You know what I mean? Because uh, I really have trouble believing a company's doing that. All right. So what else? Ch -ch 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 -ch. That's a lot of stuff already. Oh, so uh, 2023 market update, right? I talked about Pokemon sales are down, but you know what's compensating for my lost Pokemon sales? Weiss, Weiss Schwartz. They're an Asian company and they're doing fantastic. <laughs> Excuse me. Maybe Weiss Schwartz should have been in charge of Magic the Gathering because they have a magic touch right now. Uh, they printed the Disney 100 set and that is my number one selling set. For 2023, it's not Pokemon. Nope. Pokemon is, uh, well, modern, if we're talking modern. Pokemon, if you added all Pokemon sales together, it's still Pokemon. Uh, but if you're talking about all card sales, first of all, um, many of the Y Schwartz sets are doing very well, like Sneaker Bunko, Sexy Girl Cards, are doing very well on this channel. But in particular, nothing probably even comes close to, to the Mickey Mouse because those packs are already at $13 a piece and they're still going. They're still going. They're still selling. Evolving Skies is at $13 a piece. It won't move. 
So you guys really want Steamboat Mickey. And I can tell you guys, expect a Steamboat Mickey break in the future. We'll definitely be breaking Steamboat Mickey. All right. So why Schwartz doing extremely well? Uh, they're like a licensing company. It seems that their strategy is to buy a license for some popular product, and then they print it up in some uh, acceptable way. <laughs> what do they practice? They do um, they do like signature and stamp cards. Like we we just pulled a stamped Star Wars card. It looked fantastic. I thought it was really good looking. Again, it makes me wish Pokemon would maybe like try something new. What did we get for Scarlet Violet? We're bringing back EX. Wow. <laughs> uh, alt arts were an improvement, right? People really liked alt arts. We've had alt arts since Sword and Shield, haven't we? So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe before that even. Arguably. Yeah, so why Schwartz Steamboat Willie? He is by far the biggest chase on this channel. And I'm just going to go buy him for you guys at some point when, he, when the price is right and when people have moved on to the next big thing. And then we're going to do some breaks on that Steamboat Willie. And it's going to be absolutely terrifyingly expensive because first I have to buy it and then I have to mark it up in order to make a profit on it, which I'm going to want a profit. <laughs> I don't want to sell them to break even. I, it's just how it is, how it is guys. That's going to be scary. Uh, oh, grading. Grading is down. Uh, so in the year before, PSA still had their major backup. So I am not making as much money in grading anymore. The profit margin is thinner. You might have noticed it was $7 a card. It just recently went back to up to 8 last night, actually. And uh, demand's actually still pretty good. But it's good at 8 and $7 a card. Uh, when we started, it was like 25 That's because PSA grading was like $100 a card. And now PSA grading is much more affordable. Of course, you have to go get that PSA membership, which costs a bunch of money. And then you got to mail it into them. And then they got to mail it back to you. So the price they list is not necessarily the price you pay at the end. So one of the reasons people like my grading is, so seven bucks, huh? And you don't have to mail it to me, huh? And I'll just slip the uh, finished slab in with your other cards that you bought over here anyways, huh? So there's a lot of money saved doing that. And it's very fast. Okay, so grading is, uh, one of the questions I write down is, could PSA go back down to $8? So somebody asked me that recently. I thought it was a fantastic question. I think it would be insane if you saw that. And I have a feeling if it did go back to $8, a lot of these pop-up grading companies will be demolished. Because <laughs> if the if the uh, profit margin for me is thin, it's thin, it's thin for someone else too. There's not a lot of room for cheap grading if PSA is already cheap, in my opinion. So I don't know what will happen, but other grading companies, not me, by the way, I'm fine. Other grading companies will get demolished, I suspect. They can't compete with that. Uh, what do they have to charge, like $4 a card or something? So, And the reason I would get away with it is because people will grade cards with me because they like me. And I remember I had a guy who wanted to be a business partner with me like two years ago when I was talking about the idea of starting a grading company. I had a guy... He wanted to be a business partner, and he told me, well, you're going to give me 50% rights to the business. I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> I was like, I was telling him, I don't even need you. And he's like, yeah, well, I'm a lawyer, and I need to get at least 50%. I'm like, I can put the whole thing together by myself. I don't need you at all. But I told him I would like you to be a, a, a business partner, and I'd like you to work as hard as you want to work to earn you know, a larger chunk of the business. But I'm not giving you 50% right out the bat because all the value is in the, the actual brand. That's where all the value is. And I said, people will grade with me just because they like me. And in the future, when it becomes very competitive, I'll probably still get business because it's me, Card Economist. <laughs> That's what I told them. And I said, you can go start ABC, EFG, HIJK company, and you'll fail eventually when the competition gets real. Because the competition's getting real, in my opinion. And one of the nice things about uh, my grading company is I don't need to sell a single grade and I'll stay, on, I'll stay in business. doesn't matter. That's because my business is not primarily grading cards. I'm primarily a, a e-commerce card shop. So if I got zero card grade requests in a day, I don't care because I'm still selling slabs. I'm doing like a hundred different things. So, you know, these companies that kind of do rely on volume, they do rely on a lot of grades. I don't know what's going to happen to them. So I'm scared for them. I'm scared for them. Uh, stock market has been a bear market for the first six months. Could it be a bull market in the next six months? Mm, maybe. But you know what hasn't happened? Um, the war in Ukraine is not over. And Joe Biden seems as absent and 
senile as ever. Uh, what I'm really curious about is what happens next year in November when the elections are over. Who wins the elections? Is it Donald Trump? Because I think the market will jump if it's Donald Trump. And the reason that's significant is because that could mean, are we on the low side of the, is this the low side of the market? That's what everyone wants to know, but you never know, actually. Are we in the bubble right now? Maybe this is the high point. Yeah, but uh, I suspect if the war in Ukraine ends, the stock market bounces quite a lot. It goes up in a good way. So people want to see an end of the war. And I don't know if we'll see that under Joe Biden. People want to see cheap gas prices because that'll affect the whole economy. I don't think you'll see that under Joe Biden. That's my opinion. Joe Biden will instead take $40 million and give it to a city that has a lot of people who need to help, people who are uh, impoverished or marginalized. And instead of giving them that $40 million to actually help them, he'll build a 40 million electrical bus charging station. He, he just did that. So that's why I brought that up. All right, so he'll do something like that because it's for gl climate change. All right, so uh, I want to talk about my best gains in Pokemon right now. Are you ready for this? So uh, normally I don't talk about this kind of stuff, but more lately, recently, I don't care as much. In the past, I didn't talk about what's doing good for me and what's doing bad. And the reason for that is because people would copy me right away and they'd copy me so quickly that I would lose sort of like an advantage I had in the market. Nowadays, I just have a buttload of cards. I'm enjoying my life in a happy lake house. And so, you know, the content creator in me wants to talk about the information I know, and I just want to share some secrets with you guys. And I don't really care if it stops me from making some money or affects me at all. But here are where I'm seeing the big gains. Are you ready? All right. So, Tops Pokemon. Let's talk about Tops Pokemon. Uh, when I was buying the Tops base set like a year ago, you could get it in auction like $600. It's getting close to $2,000. The other cool part about the Tops Pokemon is I have made such a crazy amount flipping those graded. If you get if you get a pack of Tops cards and the hollow grades 10, you just poof, you've just made money out of nothing. It, that's what it feels like, you know, because of the cost per pack versus the cost of the graded 10. And then on top of that, you've got all these common and commons in the same pack, the non-hollows. And some of those go for quite a lot of money. So like the Charizard will go for money, the Blastoise, the Venusaur. You pull like a non-hollow Charizard, it grades 10. It's like $150, maybe 200 Made a killing in Topps cards. Absolute killing in them. And I've got a whole closet. Uh, I don't think you can see it. I've got a closet of the base set Series 1 top set in there. They all went up in price. I got actually I got a ton of tops boxes in there. Um, so all that top stuff going up is amazing. I was like, it's been so easy. Cardos. So uh, Cardos is exploding in price. I was buying up Cardos sets. I think I've still got like seven or eight ungraded sets just laying around. Uh, I brought a lot of attention to Cardos because it's an absolutely amazing set. Do I have one nearby? Let, let me show you. This guy, right? He only graded 3.5. Look at that beautiful card. You know, I probably only paid like $5 for him, though, back when nobody was talking about him. So I already bought some and already started grading them. Beautiful card. Look at that. Drawn by Ken Sugimori. I just kept telling everybody about these. And they're cool. They're old. They're actually rare. And the price of the 10s have all exploded. Yep. I think I contributed to that. <laughs> the price of the 10s have absolutely exploded. Uh... I already snatched up three of the Charizards, so, uh, and that was no secret either. I was showing people them as I bought them, and those are all up, and I wouldn't mind buying another one. So the Cardos Charizard from Cardos Pocket Monsters, such a beautiful card. It does so well. Yeah, uh, I just looked at the Cardos starter card that I bought PSA 10 for $7,000. The cheapest one was like, I think 11000 on eBay right now. The other day, there wasn't even one available. So I am loving that set. It's playful, it's colorful, it's vibrant, it's hand-drawn artist kind of work. You know, it, it stinks of old age, which I love. I love vintage cards. And uh, it, importantly, it's rare. Did I say that? It is rare. That's the most important aspect, in my opinion. Uh, so I am loving that a lot. And that has done so well for me. Because again, these cards aren't grading perfectly, but I really don't have to sell them for more than like 30 bucks to, to almost make a double profit on the actual original cost. If you're buying the cards at $5, 
and then you're grading them at $20, well, then you only have to sell them at $30 and you've doubled your money. So Cardos has done mind-blowingly well. Speaking of which, one of the very best sets to, to work for me, one of the sets that made the very most money, poker cards. I told you guys, poker cards. I told you over and over and over again, didn't I? The uh, silver deck, which used to cost like, I think it actually used to cost $120 when I started, and then it went to like 140 I just saw it the other day for like $700 on the Ebays. And you know what happened? PSA grades them. Remember, I said they do it. CGC grades them now. BGS, of course, already would grade them, and so would SGC. They all grade them, all four of the companies. And yeah, you just can't find a deck of it anymore. Everyone went out and gobbled it up because they understood. Let's, let's see. Uh, oh, 54 cards in the deck. Lugia guaranteed in the deck. Easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got 54 cards to grade. And uh, if it's costing 140 that's like $3 per card. I think it's less than $3 a card. And you just grade it for like 20 bucks, And you just have to sell it for over 23 You have to sell it for 26 to double your money per card, your cost per card. Oh, that's huge. Huge stocks. And uh, especially considering that the Lugia will sell for like $200, right? So I've got a closet full of poker cards because I was gobbling them up. I have much more than that, actually. I have a lot that were um, not sealed. I bought, I would buy them raw, too, because they're like the ones that were played, because I, I just like them that much. And they were so cheap, it was like less than a dollar per card when they were played. So I'd buy them all. Well, and that's not true anymore. Now they're expensive. Uh, they are just mind-numbingly expensive now. I think the blue deck for uh, uh, the Blastoise blue deck poker 1996, that used to be 600. You'd be lucky to find it for 1,000 now. That's like doubling your money like that. But I already knew that when I was buying them. I had a good feeling about it. And I got a whole case of them graded right here at my feet. Anytime I want to make some money, I just have to sell one of those. And it's not terribly difficult. Here's a break right now, in fact. See this? Okay, that's Suicune 9.5. Lovely card. I can understand why someone would want to own it. Absolutely. Actually, I own some expensive poker cards. Like, I bought the $700 Gengar. So that was uh, 75 bucks, I believe. 75 bucks. I'm selling that for. You know, that card probably cost me $3. Yeah, $3 card. What a flip. So, Tops, Cardos, and Poker. Three sets that everyone wasn't talking about, and I was talking about it. And now John's telling me that the door's locked. All right, so we got to wrap up here, guys. Uh, yeah, those cards have done really well. Uh, this is the last topic, and then I'll wrap up. I got to go help John. It says, for 2023, my, uh, my goal now is to expand into a lot of different TCGs. That's my goal. A lot of... A lot of other TCGs like Minecraft, that's my goal because I don't want to overly rely on Scarlet Pokemon when it's not doing very well. All right, I enjoyed the talk. I'll see you guys next time. Let me know if you want more talks like this.